is why the Inkuma Pride is such a firm favorite. It's Kinky Tail. He just looks ready for a fight. This is still her territory. The Evoker boys are here to stay. Ooh. How insane was that? Well, good afternoon everybody and welcome to yet another edition of Safari Lives, episode 52, coming to you today. And for those of you who don't know what Safari Lives is all about, well, it's a focus on all of our characters that we get to see during the course of the week and to catch you all up on their movements over the week that's passed. My name is Tristan, on camera I've got Sebastian this afternoon and it is a welcome to probably what is one of the best winter days we've had in a while. It's a little bit windy, but it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day and perfect conditions for us to delve into all kinds of interesting topics from the tent as well as our intrepid team to be out in the field looking for all kinds of animals. Remember we are coming to you live from South Africa so that means that you can interact with us and we are going to be discussing Hosanna's return today so we hope that you're going to ask us lots and lots of questions about the little chief. We're going to try and go into all kinds of things about his return and what that means for this area as well as all the other things that he kinds of faces in terms of lions and male leopards and all kinds of other things too. So hopefully you're going to engage and you can do that on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or at FC on the YouTube chat. Now I was saying Hosanna has returned and we've got to basically a little map that we can show you of where Hosanna has been and what he's been up to. So Hosanna essentially, um, here we go, here's our map over here. So just to kind of pinpoint where everything is so that you understand where we are, the top little kind of V or slice that we've got on the top there, that's Buffel's hook. This is Juma, this little kind of rectangle, I suppose it's not really a rectangle. So Seb's going to try and just get it a little closer so you can see. So I'll just try and use my finger to show you. But that's basically going to be Juma, Torchwood, and then we come down to Inkoro, Chitwa, um, Hoffmans. I believe we've got a little bit of little bit of sangli, I believe. So I'll show you once again where Juma is. So this is Juma here, this little area. Bifusuk on top, Torchwood there, Inkoro, Cheetah Plains, Chitwa, Nets, Vessels, Little Gari, Hoffmans. Arethusa Private, Arethusa Simambili EP, and down here is Londolozi and Mala Mala. So that's where we are situated on the map. And if we roll the map forward and we play it out, you're going to see Hosanna's little face appear on the map. Now, when he left us four and a half months ago, he started his journey southwards and it took him all the way down into Hoffmans and then he turned westwards towards Arethusa Private towards the Manyaleti River. Now, when he got to about there now hopefully it will stop now it's not stopping why won't it stop we need it to go back a little bit because it was supposed to stop back there a little bit all right so we're going to stop it there when he got to about that position where he is there he spent basically those four months in that area he very seldom moved from this area all he was doing was essentially going up and down this Manuleti riverbed he used to do a few kind of movements the guys said they used to see him sort of south of this big dam over here which is actually called big dam um, and he was basically hanging around in this area he did venture down towards the sand river which is at the bottom here once or twice but not very often most of his movements were in this section then go back a few weeks ago and and two days prior or three days prior to Hosanna's arrival back in Juma and about over here where I'm pointing my finger now is where he had an incident with Anderson all right so the two of them were seen together there and they had a little bit of a kind of altercation nothing too serious from what I can understand apparently at times they were lying less than 30 centimeters away from one another but lots of growling and hissing and carrying on at one another and that might have been the motivation for Hosanna to start moving back because obviously his movement away from Juma and coming back is a hot topic and something that we kind of going to go into during the course of today um, it could be due to the fact that Hosanna felt maybe a bit of pressure when he did leave and he went down there and then he once again got pressured and that sent him on his journey back and if we carry it on from there essentially he just kind of moves all the way along and basically gets to about there now where it goes faster is where we first spotted him walking up this main road over here and that was when we were out checking for traps and and, and there was a camera trap just at the bottom here um, and he was basically over here walking northwards and then in the space of about two hours he covered all of the distance to get back to where he eventually finished up at home 
over there. So that is basically Hosanna's movements and how far he actually went, which is absolutely amazing to see kind of the movement that he took and where he actually ended up. Right, now, like I said, it's not just me here. And, and while we kind of prep and get another thing to show you on Hosanna, let's send you across to uh, James as he goes in search of the little chief out in the bush. Right, hello everybody and welcome to this end of Safari Live. Zzz. My character is that thing. That there he is. There. Look. It is Hosanna. The main feature of today's show. And he is now having a snoozy. That's very good news. So hopefully we'll be able to stay with him for the duration of our show. Now remember to keep your questions character-based, please, using the hashtag SafariLive on Twitter, otherwise the chat stream on YouTube will be equally effective. And we're going to be talking about all things Hosanna, and of course a little bit about the hyenas and other leopards of this area as well. Hosanna is currently quite near our southern boundary, so I'm not sure how long we're going to have him. He has had a slightly hungry time of it, however, since his return home, and it started off with some fairly poor efforts. The pan pet has unsurprisingly settled in his usual spot. Like any privileged young Ra returning home after his gapya, he waited for food to come to him. Eventually, he realized that his empty belly wasn't going to fill itself and went shopping. This diker looked like the perfect welcome home meal. But Hosanna's lack of patience has not improved greatly on his holiday. So he's had a little bit of trouble finding himself a meal and indeed yesterday when we followed him he looked very, very hungry and had a rather nasty experience with his father. I don't know if you were watching yesterday's show. We tried our level best to get it all on camera, but basically Tangana gave him a big rev. Chased him. They did definitely have physical contact. And then eventually this fellow disappeared after quite a lengthy sort of standoff. Anyway, I hope he doesn't continue his movement stuff. I hope he turns back north towards his favorite pan sometime fairly soon. And for those of you who are wondering uh, what a gap year is, it is a gap year. And it's the sort of thing that, um, uh, well, we all quite would quite like to have had to do. And uh, those, it was made quite famous. You can go and sort of look it up. Look up on YouTube, G-A-P-Y-A-H, and you'll see exactly why I've referred to his little sojourn as a gap year. Went off to find himself, you see, and then came home. And now he's cleaning his little face. Well, Michelle, you might well be glad that, you're, that he's come home to where he belongs. Of course, where he belongs is a subject of some debate. It's highly unlikely that he's going to stay in this area for any length of time. It's not impossible. He might hang around, and that would be absolutely marvellous. We would all love for him to hang around here as much as possible. But it is entirely likely that he will move away from here again, uh, and probably on a permanent basis. But we might be wrong, we might be lucky. OK, I'm going to try and get into a slightly better position. Let's head across to Loren, who's got a flying thing. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special episode of Safari Lives, which evolves entirely around one of our favorite creatures, which is, of course, Hosanna. Now, I do have a brown hooded kingfisher here, which is a kingfisher that we don't often see very much, so I just thought we should put this on for bird of the day. My name is Lauren, and today I do have Owen on camera. So, 
my update on the leopard situation, there's been a lot of leopard activity happening around here. And we just passed Galago Pan. There's been alarm calls from Impala and I could see some tracks. Can't figure out where they're coming from or where they're going. So I've got a sinking feeling in me right now that we're missing something. And there's nothing worse than feeling like there's something happening and you're missing it. So we're going to loop back. Literally, I'm going to come, go back the way I just came and try and figure out if what it is that I'm missing. I've just got this feeling and normally my gut feelings are right. So we've done a complete loop and I'm just going to reverse and do the loop entirely again to see if I can pick up clues. Now, I always try to avoid making missions and just bumbling, but with all the leopard activity that is happening around here, I feel maybe I should try and find one of these leopards. There is so much happening, so much different dynamics. Patrick and I actually managed to locate Hukamuri yesterday before the show, so we got a great glimpse of him, and I think it's worth keeping tabs on all these leopards and seeing what exactly is going on. Just a few weeks ago, I was here and there wasn't a single leopard to be seen. Well, I definitely didn't. I think I had a brief fleeting glimpse of Miss Clalamba and that was it. And now the leopards are everywhere. So I am at the Dam Cam area because it is a favourite haunt of Mr. Hosanna. However, he is obviously not here at the moment. So I'm literally going to do a U-turn and go back the exact way I came and try and see if I can do my best Sherlock Holmes and find out what is going on. So I'm obviously gonna continue searching for who I hope is either Tlalamba or Tandy. I don't know, but they do look like female leopard tracks, so it's my best bet. So while I'm searching, let's take a look at what Miss Tandy got up to while she was searching this week. Tandy was spotted looking rather hungry and in search of a hearty meal. She was determined in her search for food and approximately five minutes later proceeded to give us the perfect Tandy slip. And of course, at the end of that wonderful sighting, Miss Tandy gave us the Tandy slip, what she is absolutely famous for. And from what I've observed from her daughter, Miss Tlalamba, recently, she seems to be picking up exactly on her mother. Every time I see her, she stays with you for a little while and then she will just give you the Tlalamba slip. It's not quite got the same ring to it, has it? So I'm going to continue to scratch around here and try and pick up on all the clues that are going on around me. And of course, while I do that, we'll send you back across to Hosanna. We have no clues to follow, thankfully. It's quite pleasant not having to follow too many clues and just being with the object of one's desire. There he is, cleaning himself in the shade of a bush. No the worse, or none the worse for wear after yesterday's little bit of conflict. He's going to move now. No. Oh, okay, let's move around a bit. While we move around and go back to where he is now going to sleep, We can go and have a look at his pantry. And of course, his pantry is a place that he likes to spend a lot of time and hopefully he'll spend the entire dry season there. But not everything that visits the pan is worth eating. Not particularly proactive is our young chief when the sun comes up. But he's no fool. Unhampered by the worries of marking a territory, he knows that skulking next to the only fresh water is a solid strategy. I'm not sure if hunger, awe or fear was going through his mind at the approach of the elephants, but he'll have to get used to such inedible visits to his pantry as the dry season takes hold. So other inedible things at the pan will include buffalo perhaps during the dry season. I suspect we might have a hippo or two there as well. 
uh, maybe the old zebra. Well, there were zebra today as well. And he would be a little bit small to take a zebra. But of course, along with him will come his normal fare of diker and impala. And possibly the old nyala as well. Let's just sneak around here to where he is currently cleaning his nether regions, believe it or not. Lucky you don't have to watch that. Watch your head here, Senzo. Senzo is on camera, everybody. All right. All right. We're going to get out of this rather sticky situation. Let's go back. James, it seems as though you are in a very sticky situation. Hopefully you will get yourself out and not get too stuck and will end up looking like that skull by being lost in the wilderness for the rest of your life. But we'll go and rescue him, I promise. We won't leave James out there. Anyway, we're still talking about Hosanna. It's nice that James managed to find him. And it's been interesting watching Hosanna since he's returned and how he's been moving around. Obviously, the dam, as, as James has pointed out, has been a sort of central focus of Hosanna's return. And, but the problem with that is that it's obviously meant that um, Hosanna's had a lot of competition and a lot of kind of things that have been happening to him. And the day that he actually arrived back, it was like everybody came out and Hosanna managed to bump into a lot of them. But most importantly, I mean, even though he bumped into Tlalamba initially, the most important thing was that he bumped into Tingana. And it says a lot about what's actually been happening with Hosanna and, and the relationship with Tingana. Um, the initial relationship was actually not too bad at all. It was this kind of moment where they walked in, and, and we'll play the video now. But if we look at it here, um, you can see that basically we've got Hosanna that is close to the vehicle. You can see Hosanna is just looking, his head is down, there's a little bit of growling that was taking place. And then you see Tingana gets up. Now at this point in time, we're going to just stop it there, because I want to show you something. Tingana at this point in time is staring. He's now not smelt Hosanna at all. He's now got a situation where he's seen another leopard. And so his response that he's going to have in that situation is to try and basically establish what's going on. He sees male leopard and his immediate thing is to try and defend himself and his territory as much as possible. So from there what's going to happen is he's going to start to salivate and he's going to try and make himself as look as big as possible and approach this leopard that is slightly smaller. Hosanna for, the, for now is still kind of basically um, watching his dad as if to say you know I'm not really worried and uh, he sees this male leopard and is basically watching to see what Tingana does if we carry it on from there um, and we and we play it on now why won't you play there we go it's playing now you'll find that Tingana starts to move forward he's not actually being aggressive in any way whatsoever he's just walking along and he's kind of just sniffing around and then you see Hosanna just bolts and runs away now the interesting part about it is if we stop it there Tingana hasn't moved at all. Tingana is ending up in a situation where he's just literally walking towards Hosanna to figure out who he is. So if you look at that particular position there, you see that he's basically stopped. And he was just trying to smell and see who this leopard is. But I think the previous instance of Hosanna running into a male leopard, which was Anderson, um, a few days before that, is maybe kind of made Hosanna a little bit more wary of how he approaches other leopards. And so what he did is he kind of moved off and gave himself some space away from Tingana and then what Tingana does following that is quite interesting. Tingana then starts to move exactly to where Hosanna was. You'll see his nose goes down onto the ground. He begins to kind of sniff around. You can see a little bit if I stop it you'll see and go back slightly. I'm just going to try and roll it back slightly that you'll see a little bit of salivation coming down so you'll see a few droplets of his saliva um, dripping from his mouth so that is always indicative uh, you can just see them there um, that's always indicative of a leopard that has encountered another um, individual and and that I mean it's not very easy on the screen I'm afraid but there is two drops that are coming down um, and that's indicative of an individual that's going through a heightened phase where his adrenaline is pumping nose to the ground is trying to work out exactly what happens he smells Hosanna and from there really doesn't matter too much at all he then just basically carries on and kind of walks off and goes and lies down and Hosanna is left to do his own thing 
Now, generally what you would see from a male leopard who is highly territorial like Tingana will be, um, is that from here he should have had a very different response, much more like what James experienced yesterday, which we'll get into now, is that essentially Tingana should see Hosanna at this age and this size as a potential threat and as a potential competition for his territory. And so he should have had a situation where Tingana from there should have started to vocalize, should have started to chase Hosanna and to really send the message home, you're not welcome. Instead, Tingana, as much as he kind of showed that he was not happy and growled a little bit, really kind of walked off and left Hosanna alone and Hosanna could lie down. And that might be the key to whether Hosanna gets to stay here or not. A lot of people will say that a male leopard will not be tolerant of a younger male leopard but there's a few cases where this has happened not only um, now with Hosanna and Tingana but you go back a few years um, to Londolozi where two tones male and Campan male were actually seen mating the same female and they were father and son um, which is quite interesting and then down south in the Sabi Sabi at the moment there's the white dam male um, with his dad Masha Ben and at Londolozi's there's this tortoise pan male that is also around under the cover of where he kind of was born so it can happen that a male leopard can stick around and probably what's going to need to happen is Tingana if he is at the age that he is starts to relinquish and, and to start to lose condition then we'll start to see his kind of um, processes change slightly, he'll become a little bit more nomadic like what we saw from Mvula and then you'll start to see Hosanna potentially starting to kind of stay and stick around for a longer period but there's a lot of other factors that are at play which we're going to get into. Now Kirsta, sorry I forgot, I didn't get the name I think it was Della, um, what happens if Hosanna soars? So if Hosanna soars then that's a direct kind of territorial display, Isabella, there we go, sorry, um, is a direct display or a direct sound to those around him that he is now establishing himself and is sending a message that I am now becoming territorial. So a saw is essentially the same as urinating and scent marking. It's just a vocal sound that is made to establish territory. And so if he saws, he's going to attract the attention of not only Tingana, but Hukamuri and whoever else might be around at the time. And so I think the longer Hosanna stops sawing and, and just stays around and mills about like this and the more Tingana gets used to him here again I think the better for him because obviously like I say time is on Hosanna's side as opposed to Tingana. Tingana starting to go he's slowly going to start deteriorating now even though he's in fantastic condition and looking all right bar the little limp which I believe was gone yesterday he still looks good and I think that we're going to see a, a situation if Hosanna sticks around for a few more weeks where it's going to go back to pretty much what we saw Tingana and Hosanna like last year which I'll show you how that relationship was and how they kind of moved around each other. Anyway, well, it's not just James, it's not just Lauren, it's not just me that is out. Also, Charlotte is out and about, and I think that she's scratching around looking for some spotted cats of her own. I am out. I finally made it out. The gremlins have stopped bothering me. And Darby and I are on the hunt. I am Trishala and of course Darby on camera with me today. So it's very exciting. It's Safari Lives. It's one of my favorite times of the week because we get to catch up with all our characters, which I really, really like. In fact, if there's one time to be watching, it's on a Monday afternoon because that's when we get all our information about everything that's been going on. And there has been a lot going on. There have been the skittish male around. That's exciting. We had the wild dogs pack as well. And we had all those lions and all that leopard action. It was truly exciting. So for me today, I'm going to look for Tingana around these parts. Now, he apparently was in this area where Darby's showing you right now. And look how beautiful that is. The bush with the beautiful African sky and sun. Well, that's where Tingana was or around that area. So we're looking at the roads here on this block and seeing if he crossed out, where he crossed out, and hopefully not crossed out north, because north is Buffletook, of course. Now, apart from him, I do intend on spending some time at the hyena den, or one of the dens, wherever it's active. I got to see June, um, not June, but ribbon and cub yes uh, last week but i haven't seen them since so that'll be good as well anyway we we're talking about the wild dogs and the exciting things that have been happening and i'd love to show you a little thing about that but before we do that let me just make it clear so at the moment when we thought we, we did do the cl clip we actually thought that we didn't know which dogs these were but in fact it turns out that it is the investic packed at least one male and that the rest are sort of 
dispersal mails from the Open Pack and the Lion Pan Pack. So there you go. Enjoy. A pack of unknown wild dogs came to investigate Juma. We are rarely visited by unknown characters, let alone a pack of wild dogs so unknown that not even James Richard could identify them. Whether they have been here in the past or not, we may never know. But we do know that being on Juma seemed a thrilling adventure for the pack, marking parts of it as their own and ending their escapades as most animals do, with a bit of play. Did you see that, James Richard? Just for you, buddy. <laughs> no, it was always cool, so cool to have all those dogs on our property. They are, like we said, not exactly as we once thought. But it's the same we had that open and the line hand pack also coming. It's always nice to have characters that are new. In fact, Darby and I were just saying, it's always exciting to meet a leopard that's a new leopard that you haven't met before. Like the first time I met Subui, that was unbelievable. So plenty going on. And plenty to chat about today. I believe Tristan's topic is fire, I think. And I think it would be lovely to get an explanation of Hosanna's return and his movements and everything surrounding that. But I am on my own mission. I am on a mission to the highest time kind of spirits. But in the meantime, let me send you over to Lauren. Oh, everybody's got missions today, haven't they? So both Owen and I really, really scratched around the loop and I firmly believe there's a female leopard there. We saw the tracks and it goes right off into the thicket. No way that we're able to follow or even track once it goes into the thicket, I'm afraid. Sorry, I thought it was some tracks there. So what I'm thinking of doing is just bumbling around this area and then just before the end of drive as it starts to get a little bit cooler i'm going to come back to this pan and try and stake it out to see if someone or anyone in fact comes for a drink that is the beauty of this season although it's very chilly trust me it's so cold in the morning at night time and this is coming from a scottish person the vegetation's different there's not water everywhere, it's not raining, there's not little puddles and water holes and the plentiful supply of water that there used to be in the summer. The water is much more concentrated now, so that is why we can pretty much guarantee anytime you do go to a water source, you will potentially come across some water dependent animals that are needing a drink. So we're going to head in the direction of Buffalo's Hook and then we're going to look back and just try and see if we can find out who this leopard is very frustrating i'm convinced she is there and i'm convinced it was either tandy or clalamba now talking of this pair this duo they have had many interesting interactions of late that we have managed to capture on camera and they're starting to get very competitive with their food so let's go and take a look at what happened when miss tandy had her kill Tandy filled up her belly on Zimpala, but we can't confirm if she killed this herself, as her young daughter Tlalamba was present as well. Feeling unimpressed that her mother stole her breakfast, or hoping that Tandy may be feeling maternal. However, it was clear sharing is caring was not on Tandy's mind. Poor little Tlalamba just had to lurk about until her mother dearest was finished. So of course Miss Clalamba was hanging around hoping to steal or catch some remains of her. Oh hello Warty Hockey family. I'm just gonna stop. Let's see if Owen can get them. Oh no! Okay, warthogs are fast. They're really fast. They don't like to be on camera. How cute! Oh, there we go. Oh, and you can do it. You can do it. Go get them. Oh, run, guys, run. I think there's a leopard in town. <laughs> so cute. We've got a whole family here of warthogs. And we're probably not going to have them for very long, though. The minute I turn on my engine, 
they're going to run for the hills. But did you see the young little piglets there? How cute. I can actually still see them, but I have a funny feeling from the angle Owens that he probably can't. And no doubt by the time I turn my... <laughs> I don't know why it's so amusing to see them run, like, hey, with their little manes flopping all over the place. I sometimes feel sorry for warthogs. They're in a constant state of panic and fear. And I had some very, very difficult sightings with warthogs up in the Mara. They were not live, but we actually were live with a fuel drive. And a male warthog ran out right in front of our vehicle and his testicles had been ripped off and he was pouring with blood. So it was very, very sad to see. And we had to turn the car away and avoid it for the kids' drive. Okie dokie, we're going to continue on to the water point and we're going to send you guys across to Chushada. Good luck. Hopefully you'll find what you are looking for. As you can see, I'm precariously placed in a tree, which normally is a place of sanctity for a leopard. Obviously, trees are great places for them to be able to climb, to get out of the way of potentially heat or insects or something like that, as well as to stash food. Now, this would be an absolutely useless tree for a leopard, a great tree for a cub to play, but a bad tree for a leopard to store a kill because anything would be able to get to it. But this week, Hosanna learns quite sort of clearly just how dangerous trees can be in many respects because he managed to get himself <coughs> into a bit of a mess and I landed much like the animals that <laughs> went into the tree and stole from him which I'm going to show you now. So he unfortunately had a little incident with the Inkuhumas who decided to come and <laughs> thanks Kirst, um, to come and basically steal from him and so essentially his welcome has been a bit of a rough ride hasn't it? I mean Hosanna has arrived here and had all kinds of issues to deal with so first he bumped into his dad which I'm sure unsettled him a little bit and then he arrived at the pan and after days of not eating was starting to look really hungry and he eventually managed to bring down a animal and well we'll play the clip out and so you can see what kind of transpired but this is him at the dam cam and the footage is from the dam cam itself so it's a bit shaky in places which is to be understood it's not easy but there you can see if we just go back a little bit there so I'm just going to take it back slightly all right so if you watch down in the right hand corner here and watch him coming across and there's a bush you'll see him run just behind the bush so he's now sitting behind that bush at the moment and he's waiting very patiently for an animal to come down and there is the animal there so if you look in the center of your screen you're going to see an animal running towards him so there it is there and those glowing eyes now a lot of you debated as to what this animal could have been so in my experience, an animal that runs like that generally is probably an impala, just from the general size of it. It's also its shape. And when they run, this is very indicative of rutting impalas at this time of the year. They chase each other and then they run like this, and they run pretty blindly. And this antelope obviously is going to come down and he runs along and we lose it just behind the bush all right and then from there all of a sudden we see pandemonium play out as the camera kind of tilts up and we see Hosanna going into the tree but what is not evident there and what takes a little bit of time to actually see and so we're going to just take it back a little bit so that you can see it so I'm going to try and do it in slow motion for you just let me just pause it because otherwise it's difficult to show you what I'm talking about oh, come on go back a little bit further Come on. All right, we're getting there slowly. Sorry, it takes a bit of time to get to where I need it to be. Now, a lot of you I know are very traumatized by the sighting and that it was very difficult for a lot of you to watch it live, which I can understand and I sympathize. I mean, it was chaos from the moment it happened. What's interesting is, I mean, this clip has been slightly edited um, and even then, in the, the total sum of this time that this is taking place, even though we've cut it, it wasn't very long at all. I think it was about nine seconds from the time where the Impala comes running along to the time where the camera gets to there. It's really very, very short. And what is incredible, is for those of you that didn't see it, is as he's getting towards the tree, now, this is, it's not very clear, but you'll just see, make out 
there is an impala. Now if you see the size of that animal, if you look, there is its front legs, its body, and its back legs. So that is a large antelope. It is not a dika. A dika would be half the size of that. So that's also why I said impala. If you sort of make that in relation to the hyena that's going to run in, you'll realize that it is basically a impala that is there. But if you look there, I don't know if you saw it, this hyena runs in at serious speed and it jumps and it actually grabs the impala and it's a pity that it's a little bit difficult to see it when we pause it but if you watch very carefully there you see it basically running and jumping and so as Kirsty is showing you very cleverly on the system, <laughs> this is amazing how we can see this, how the hyena jumped and actually grabbed but missed and that allowed Hosanna to get it up and if we roll it forward a little bit further, so if we just keep going Oh, Jerry gets the credit. Uh, well done, Jerry. You're very clever. Um, now, I've just got to try and roll this forward slightly because I wanted to show you basically as it goes up and moves. So he takes it up the tree and that impala is actually not dead as he's taking it up. And you can see when he gets to this position here, there, as it flops down, right, the impala there it's tricky to see it's now hanging down off the bottom of the branch and as it goes forward there if you Jerry if you can just roll it forward for me a little bit um, you'll see that the Impala drops down and then you can play it and you'll actually see the Impala kicks there that's there it's lifted its legs you can see its legs have now come up and it's basically kicking it's still alive so not only has he grabbed this Impala but he's also made the decision to run to a tree while it's still alive get it up into the tree away from a hyena and you have no idea how much strength that takes for a leopard to be able to do that. It's absolutely fascinating to have watched and he missed losing it to the hyena by seconds. What then transpires is obviously poor Hosanna he tries to catch his breath and as we play it on the hyena looks and sees that well unfortunate for it it's not going to get anything it hops about at the bottom there and <coughs> Hosanna gets his kill up into the tree and can finish kind of strangling it and doing what he needs to do. But then enters the Inkahuma pride and I saw a lot of people were asking questions about the Inkahuma Pride. How did they find this kill? What were they doing there? And there's probably two answers to that. So I'm going to pause it now before we go too far. But essentially, the Inkahuma Pride would have arrived because one is it's very, very dry at the moment. So water in this area is incredibly important. Um, and so these animals need water and, and there's very little fresh water here. And so they might have made their way because they needed water to start with. The second thing is the commotion of him killing that antelope and the hyena running in, there would have been some noise. There wouldn't have just been a kind of rush and silence. That hyena would have cackled a little bit as it jumped and there would have been that noise. And lions are very in tune with the environment. They would have heard that and they would have come in. From there it was very simple. Once they were at the dam drinking, the noise of Hosanna in the tree, the smell of a dead animal would have all been there. And as soon as they walk and they pick up that scent, there's nothing that's going to stop them and they'll pick it up incredibly fast. And who knows which way the wind was blowing at that time. The wind might have been blowing straight towards the dam and the lions then picked up that scent and they went straight there. Now initially when I saw a lot of the reports from this everyone said three lines um, and that's because no one noticed that there's actually a lion already up in the tree in this particular shot so there was four lions that were there um, not three and it's the four adult in Kahumas as far as we can see it's a bit tricky because obviously the it's a little bit far end of the dam cam lens and that makes it a little bit hard but um, you can see the lions having trouble trying to get in and out of the tree, which is pretty typical. Um, lions are not the greatest climbers, and this particular tree is quite large, and they will just kind of wrestle with trying to get up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. You'll find eventually the one decides better of it and reverses back down, very un-sort of ladylike at all, and then eventually gathers the strength to kind of climb up. And this is when it becomes very, very interesting, and I'm actually not going to talk too much as we roll this forward, because I want you to listen to the growls. I don't know if they'll come through, but Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Now they were now they were quite faint on the dam cam. Those growls there, a lot of you I believe thought that might have been Hosanna being attacked by lions. So as you're seeing this bush shaking, what's actually happening there is that that is two lions fighting so they are fighting over the impala carcass even up in the tree at this stage and if we stop it there there is no sign of hosanna at all in that whole frame so what we've got is we've got a lioness that is kind of on the bottom right and then a lioness 
that is on the top of that and so um, if I can kind of point it out so I'll just get rid of that but here's the lioness tail coming here that's one line there the other line if you look here is over there and is moving about and the impala carcass is lying on this branch in this section now Hosanna I looked for him in this footage and tried to find him somewhere in this area and I know a lot of people pointed out this particular area over here as being Hosanna. Unfortunately what this is is just the way the leaves have gone up against the, the dark sky has created a little spot pattern that looks like his but it's not him. I suspect Hosanna was somewhere right up at the top out of this frame and in the top 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 branches of trees and that's what leopards will do when they get chased by lions and, and they're still in a tree is they'll try and seek the highest highest point on the lightest branches in order to be able to stay away from those lines they know that they're much lighter and the lines can't get that high and so then what happens is these two lines essentially start fighting and carrying on and eventually their fighting leads to one lioness actually almost getting herself into a lot of trouble and you'll find that they start to kind of battle and the carcass starts to slip and the line slips and if you watch now i'm going to keep quiet so listen for the thud as this lioness falls Now you would have heard that thud. And that's that lioness falling out of the tree with the carcass. And if you see how high that is in relation to the size of those lions, it is a serious fall. It's not much unlike Brent falling out of his um, torchwood tree um, a few years ago. Um, and then you'll find that they came down, they fed, um, and you already see when that lioness came down um, that the others had already grabbed it and split the carcass up and they were eating. And what Hosanna did is he just sat very, very patiently, which is something that he's probably learnt because he's not the first time he's come across lions. And he waited, and then eventually, if we just kind of roll it out, Hosanna comes down the tree. And evidence, by the way, he climbs out. You don't need to worry about him at all. He's in kind of good condition, not limping, and makes a quick, hasty retreat away from that area because obviously he didn't want to really be around. Um, when it came time to kind of sticking around, I mean, lines might have been close at that point, but he just wanted to get out of there. So, incredible kind of thing to witness, and, and I can wholeheartedly uh, understand why a lot of you were very nervous when it came to that sighting. It's incredibly difficult, one, because you can't see what's going on. There's a lot of noise that generally takes place with lions feeding, let alone lions chasing a leopard and then feeding. Um, and it's Hosanna. I mean, we all want the best for him and we don't want anything to happen. So it is very scary when we have these incidents. But what's amazing is that you must remember Hosanna was orphaned at a very young age and he has had to live in this wilderness section um, for two years and um, since his mom passed or left or whatever the case may be and so he's learned very well what lions mean and his experiences have taught him how to get out of that and it's amazing to have seen him in practice and how he knew just to shoot right up to the tops of the tree to get out of them and to stay as safe as possible but undoubtedly he was probably highly irritated at the fact that he couldn't be a sausage after kind of losing his meal anyway talking about the little chief james is still with him so let's send you across to our boy and see if he's still sulking about his lost meal Unfortunately, we have only managed to get into a position where the most obvious feature of this cat are now the golden orbs designating him as a male of the species. There we are. He's in a deep thicket currently, and I'm afraid because there's a tourism vehicle here, we can't actually get closer because we'll block their view. So we're just going to have to look at him from this angle for now. We have had some wonderful views of him up until this point. Keep your questions flowing using the hashtag Safari Live, of course, and the chat stream on YouTube. Sorry, one sec, everybody. I'm just going to have to quickly move back because apparently Aubrey wants to move out. I'm not entirely sure where he's going to go. Oh, I see he's got a big stick in front of him. That's why. Anyway. While we reverse and get into position, uh, Cheetah, sorry, what was that? Kirsten, I missed that entirely with the startup of a vehicle louder than a Pantechnicon. Ian, is that a question? Oh, the length of his whiskers compared with my hand. Oh, Ian, probably about, I think his whiskers are about that long probably 
plus or minus. I think. <laughs> All right, let's have another look in here. <laughs> All I got there, everybody, was the word Ian. be able to get a nice view in here and we'll be all alone. And of course the Land Rover Defender has been designed to catch all obstacles and flick them into your face. Now, as I get into a nice position here, let us go and have a look at Hosanna trying not to be so much a leopard, but another spotted cat. Eventually, Hosanna killed an impala at the pan, only to have it stolen by the first lion seen on Juma for three millennia. Still, he persisted at his pan pantry, his strategy seemingly about to bear fruit. He became one with the grass, like a kung fu ninja Jedi leopard. Then, inexplicably, he went cheetah. Epic fail. As I suspect he's been doing for the last week or so, he sought a snack to tide him over. I'm not sure what he ate here. Righty, we've got back into a nice position for him. Now, I think he's eaten something last night. I don't know if you can see, but I think his belly is relatively full. So I think he did get something to eat. As you can see, he's been fairly desperate to find some food and he's had two carcasses now. Well, one full carcass stolen by lions and another third of a carcass stolen by lions over the last week or so. But I think he has eaten something last night. I was a little worried when I saw him walking yesterday on account of the fact that he has got this kind of gap between his hips and his ribs, which really indicates a fairly extreme level of hunger. And I wonder if he hadn't been sick before he came back here. He hadn't perhaps been lying up for about a week with nothing to eat, feeling ill for some reason. I don't think he's sick now. But he just looked very skrall, as they say, in South Africa. It's a nice word, meaning sort of skinny and a bit scruffy and in need of a good feed. No, definitely not. A viewer called Itchy Penguin. Hello, Itchy Penguin. Wonderful to hear from you. I don't think that he has a kill stash somewhere. I think if he had a kill stash somewhere, he'd be that somewhere. He's walked quite a long way since he was originally found by Rexon and Aubrey about an hour ago. He wouldn't be walking away from his kill. He could be going to water and then back again, but then he'd go straight to the water and probably straight back. So I think it's very unlikely that he has a kill stashed somewhere. He is now very soundly asleep, as is his wont a lot of the time. And you can imagine, if Senzel zooms out from where we are now, you'll be able to see that we're on the banks of the great Marty drainage line or river system and he would be totally invisible to us driving past. We did drive past three or four times uh, when he moved here. We couldn't find him anymore and thankfully Aubrey managed to get him for us. Thank you, Senzo. What are you pointing at? Back of my head? <laughs> Working with Senzo was often quite challenging. It's a little bit like interpreting Morse code. And there you can see is his foot, which is about the same size as my palm. Little bit, no, about the same size as my palm. From the left-hand side there of his little front toe to the back of his back pad, about the same size as my palm. I unfortunately will probably never be able to check that because Osana is not big on giving the high five. Or in his case, the high four. Uh -huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, 
definitely something in his belly there and he's not pregnant that would be unlikely uh, given his age and of course the fact that he is a male let's go now across to the exuberant Trishala Naidu and find out if she's found any of her characters I'd love to give Hosanna a high four I think that is awesome I think that would be the last high four you ever give your first and last <laughs> But I am now on my way to the hyena den. The light is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's soft and glorious and it's just winter. Oh, it's wonderful. It feels like, like a romantic novel, it does. That's what it feels like. Anyway, I'm heading down to the hyena den. I've looked for tracks there around where Tingana was last seen. I didn't see too many tracks. I did see a set of tracks for hyena that were going into the block and I thought, oh, let me just check around, but nothing there. So I decided let's go and pay a visit to the many hyena dens and hopefully we can bumble around and see exactly who's at which den, especially since we've seen June's cubs at the Shibamu den, the southernmost den, and then we've also seen ribbon and cub at the top but they're not at the regular den one further in just a little bit so we'll check all those out and try to straighten up whose house is where who is living where and who is still living where maybe we'll be lucky and we'll see corky and plonk or pretty and her too which would be awesome really really nice i am passing through hukumuri's territory so of course you know that would be wonderful to stumble upon him Now, where I, okay, give us a few more meters and then I will show you a really nice expanse on to our left. Mm. Oh, it's not the nicest spot. I think the spot I was thinking of was actually on the other road. But you can see so vastly, you can see Juma and the wonderful clouds and you can see it's a beautiful day. And of course, a very dead tree in the way as well. Hardly in the way, part of the whole art, I think. I really do. And you can see that there's lots of silver cluster leaves around here towards that end. Yep, lots and lots lots of silver cluster leaves. Anyway, very pretty and you can see that they're all fizzling away. One of the last to do so, but I'm gonna head off now. Let me send you back to Tristan and his wonderful discussions on our golden boy. Indeed, Trishala, it is a beautiful, beautiful winter's afternoon and a stark contrast to yesterday's weather, which was well, foul and not very pretty at all. So it's nice to have some golden light and it's always good when we have James with Hosanna and like I say, pretty sunlight to make Hosanna look good. I thought, I mean, many of you probably thought I was going to say to make James look good, but no, that would be weird if I said that. And so even though James is, hey, I'm sure a fine fella for many of you ladies, for us men, we do not look at him that way, do we, Sebastian? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not, yes. That would be a bit weird. Anyway, we are still dissecting Hosanna and his, well, many friends and companions and things that are out here. And one animal that he has tried, I suppose, to high for many, many times is his dad. And so I was saying earlier that his initial interaction with, us, with Tingana was quite interesting. Obviously last night there's a little bit more kind of aggression from what James tells me. I mean, obviously it's tricky when you're not there and you can't see what's going on, but James has been in the bush for a very long time. And so I trust his judgment and trust what he has to tell me. And it sounded like things have changed. But what I wanted to show you is last year when Hosanna was here, the relationship that he had with Tingana is, is quite interesting. So... If you have a look, essentially what we have here is Hosanna at the bottom um, doing his thing and his uh, sausage dad up in the tree. He really is a sausage when he's full, isn't he? It's just skin folds all over his face and a kind of big log-like body. There's Hosanna sitting below at the bottom looking up at his dad longingly wanting meat. And what you'll find from this interaction is quite 
interesting. I mean, the two of them are pretty much ignoring each other. Now, there could be reasons for that. Um, so th the one reason for it is is that essentially Tingana is distracted by the fact that there is a carcass. Um, you know, anytime there's a carcass that is around, that's going to distract um, Tingana, and, and he's going to be more focused on meat than he is going to be on the leopard. And we've seen that now with um, the Inkahumas and the Evoca males. I saw a video of when they stole Hosanna's kill from one of the landowners, and there's no interest whatsoever in Hosanna at that point. Meat is meat, and they must eat, and so they do their thing. Now, Hosanna, in the meantime, though, his demeanor is what is very interesting and what has changed since he has come back. You look at how he's sitting there. He's got his back to the perceived threat. Um, essentially, that would be the perceived threat. He's facing away towards the drainage, whereas Tingana is above him and in a position of power. Now, normally what you would see here is if this was two males competing, this young leopard here would be facing that male and would be cowering and would be having his head down, whereas Hosanna, if you watch what goes on, if we just carry it on, doesn't even really bat an eyelid too much. He watches his dad come down, but more because he actually wants to see the carcass than anything else. He's not being submissive. He's not really even vocalizing at that point. And you see Tingana runs down knowing full well where Hosanna is. And if we pause it there, you see the two of them are almost side by side and Hosanna is not running away at all and he is no longer he's not even in any way perturbed at this stage like I say he's probably looking to give uh, a high fall to his dad rather than go anywhere else but that's obviously changed I mean the interaction we saw when he first arrived back you saw he bolted rather than sat I mean that's the same distance we're talking if in, in fact this is probably closer um, and subsequently last night we had that interaction as well so the the relationship is starting to change slightly this is not what we're seeing anymore although i do think that if we start to see a kill and the two of them together we might see a very similar situation once again where the two of them sit very very close to one another i think if there's meat that's probably going to calm tingana down quite a bit especially if hosana doesn't try anything and he just sits quietly in the corner like he did here and doesn't try and make too much of a sort of nuisance of himself from there tingana just walks around i think we eventually see sydney's face hosana watches him very carefully not because he wants to see where tingana goes but he wants to probably go up and get the carcass so that's the relationship he had the relationship now not quite the same and there's starting to be a little bit of kind of edginess to it but i do think over a carcass i think tingana would be far more worried about the carcass than he would be about his son and i actually think we would probably see a fairly stable sort of sighting out of it i think when there's no carcass around that's what happens now in terms of territories, a lot of you have been asking for months for me to do territorial maps. I, I used to do it. Now, I do apologize about my map for two reasons. My map, one, is on this table because the wind was blowing too hard, so it was getting blown around all over the place, which is why we've got these horrible creases everywhere. So I, I do apologize about that. And then also I apologize about my drawing skills and the, very, the lack of scale that we have here. This is in no way in scale and is also probably not very correct in terms of the layout, but it's close enough and you get the idea. Now, Tingana is going to be the black pen and basically his territory has changed quite a bit. When he was, or just before he was sick, which is I think is the last time I did one of these maps, he was hanging around anywhere down sort of this area, the vessels, um, nets, Chitwa Chitwa, Little Gauri, into Nkoro, Torchwood, Bufuzuk, Juma, and even sometimes a little bit towards Arethusa. He then got ill and he ended up staying really around Chitwa Dam, which would be around this sort of spot here. Um, and then from there he got better and started to push back. But when he pushed back, his territory changed a lot. And Tingana now very, very seldom frequents the southern boundary. What we're seeing from Tingana is more a case where he's kind of hanging around, I would say, this sort of section. But what's interesting is he's going very deep into Biffle's Hook and then into the western side of Torchwood. So that is Tingana, which I've done a little map up there, which we'll get into a little bit later. So I'll write Tingana across here. Um, Tingi is what we're going to call him for short. This red spot here is Gauri Dam. And this is the Mulwati coming down, so that gives you an idea of just the riverbed. But essentially this western side of Juma is not really Tingana's. But what is interesting is that this week there is a road that runs like this. This is Vuyatela Access. We found Tingana there. 
now or pat farm Tingana there which is way 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 out of the area that we have been seeing Tingana of late and what seemingly is happening is Tingana is getting pressure from another few individuals which we're going to touch on just now and that might be dictating why his territory is pushing so much more into Buffalo's Hook and why are we seeing Tingana spending more time up here than anywhere else the sort of epicenter and the concentration of sightings that we're finding with Tingana is generally running along this sort of Mulwati. The Mulwati then comes this way. This is Tamburti Dam, so we talk about that a lot. Um, and he spends a lot of time there. Um, obviously Gari Dam, he spends a lot of time. And judging from some of the camera trap photos and various other things, Buffalo's Hook Dam over here, uh, Buffalo's Hook Dam, um, is where he kind of spends most of his time and he's bouncing between these three water holes at the moment. Very seldom down towards Treehouse over there. He seems to be these ones and then occasionally down towards Torchwood Dam over there but very very seldom again that side. So that's Tingana's territory. In terms of where Hosanna is moving in relation to all of this and where he's come back, obviously Hosanna came back in. This is pretty much this is where Hosanna moves at the moment. In the last few days, or since he's been back, this is what we're seeing from Hosanna, is pretty much that. To give you an idea of how narrow the area is, and you can see it incorporates the Mulwati system, Twin Dams down at the bottom here, and Gari Dam at the top being his drinking points, and then obviously Galago Pan on this side. We have not seen him north of Galago Pan yet. We haven't seen him kind of how far he's going to Lilgari, but it doesn't seem to be too far at all. So Kristen, what size territory does a newly dominant male generally take? Tricky to say, I think it depends on a lot of factors. So is there a death that allows that animal to move in? Um, does he chase the animal off the previous dominant individual and kill him? Um, is the previous dominant male old and decrepit? Is the previous dominant male nomadic? What is the sort of situation and how much space is that left and what is the density like? In this situation in the Sabi Sands what we seem to find is that most young leopards when they start to become territorial generally is a very small area and they slowly then start to expand it out as they gain confidence and size because obviously with territory comes testosterone and body size and so they then start to grow it out and if you have a look what's 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 kind of made interest me is that when we first saw Tingana this is where the first sighting of him was in 2011 he then moved his territory was this kind of area and slowly but surely he shifted all the way at one point in 2015 his territory I'm going to just draw it on this map, which is going to ruin my map a little bit, but I'll, I'll suffer the consequence. But this was Tingana's territory in 2015, essentially. So this will give you an idea of just how far and how much he's lost over the course of the last few years. That was Tingana's entire area. He used to get seen from there and within the next day he would be at Nkoro. So that gives you an idea of how much he used to move and how much that has changed and as he's gotten older. And this, So what happens is, is slowly their territories get eroded by newer males into a smaller territory and newer males smaller territory grows as he gets older and then goes down again. Right. We'll carry on with this because there's a few other leopards that I want to add to this and we're going to get into them now now. In the meantime though, I think I'm going to send you across to Trishala. I think she's gone to Hyena Dens and I think I'm supposed to send you to her. But let's see. I'm so glad that Tristan found some paper to do his drawings on. I did offer him some of mine, but it was not big enough. Anyway, I have decided to just turn up here a little bit because we saw a herd of elephants off to our left but then they walked into this block that's here and we are waiting for them to come out somewhere at least on this road now usually if they're close by I'll be able to hear them the breaking of the branches the stripping of bark which hasn't been happening too much just yet the stripping of the bark but I'm sure it will become one of the major sources for nutrients for the elephants very soon. Hmm. Where did you go, guys? It is quite a wider block, though. So it may take them some time to go down or get down here, but luckily it's still on my way to the hyena den. Hmm. 
Okay, well, I'm going to keep looking for them. I'm sure they will pop out any moment. But let us have a bit of a recap on Tingana and his activities last week. Sightings with Tingana have been scarce since the return of the old Duke San Hosanna. The presence of the little chief and the skittish male in his territory may have perturbed Tingana, but he showed that he is still the big chief around these parts. Age takes us all and even the mighty Tingana has started to succumb. However, the persistent limp is the only sign of the Duke's ripe old age of almost 13. He continued on his normal patrol, attesting that his paws still have a firm grip on his territory. Well, if you're wondering about his limp, it appears that it has gone away as of yesterday afternoon. So, but I mean, we're used to that. We've seen him limping and then, especially when he gets up, you know, your muscles are tight or cold, I suppose, and they sort of are rigid and he seems to always limp when he gets up and, oh well. I think he'll be fine. He definitely does still have his, a firm grip on his territory. But it's always interesting to see the interactions that go on, especially between him and Sana, him and Tlalamba, all of those. It's very, very interesting. I don't think I've ever read about leopard interactions like I've experienced, which is such an honor and a privilege to be able to experience it like that, even if it's not written in the books, which is awesome. I can see there's some elephant dung right in front of me. So they are lurking around somewhere and it's nice and fresh and wet. Oh, I can hear them. I can hear them. Come on, guys, come out. Let's listen. In the bushes. Tavi, I'm gonna reverse a little bit and see if we can get a gap there. Oh, little blue wax balls. Are those? I can't see you, but these birds are all fluffed up. That is so cute. Thanks, Tavi. Let's see. Ah, there they are. There they are. Almost as if they decided to avoid me. Knew that I think they're going to come out on this, on this road, and instead that they've decided to go straight into that block. I think if I reverse a little, I should be able to get them. Let's try. Are they here? They are not. Oh, you've got one. There we go. Okay. See, they've just diverted. And there's a little baby. Anyway, I'm going to stick around with them. Let me send you for t over to Lauren and find out how her search is going. Oh, well, I hope Tishala finds the hyenas because I have myself been looking for them and also no luck since i've been back from leave i have not seen one single hyena and talking of that i haven't seen one single animal today other than an impala i don't know if we've taken the wrong route we've disappeared for a while because we had some evil gremlins after us we did go up to buffalo's dam and it was empty no scuba steve or snorkel whoever and only winston winston church bill <laughs> was the only animal present at that water point so we've decided to come backwards to get a better signal for you all and to keep looping around and checking the pan i don't know why i just have a feeling something is going to pop up for a drink a little bit later So whether I get to see Tandy and Little Lamba, who knows? That's who I'm after. I also haven't seen them in quite some time. So it's not just the interactions that we've shown you already. They have had more. And Tlalamba is proven to be quite the little expert at hoisting our kill. So let's take a look at what happens. 
while Tandy slept off a huge belly, Clalamba seized the chance to grab the impala, and grab it she did. Tandy came to investigate what her daughter was up to, and like mother, like daughter, Clalamba gave Tandy a taste of her own medicine. In pressing us further, Clalamba dragged the kill and hoisted it up a tree. We all felt equally proud and amused as Clalamba fumbled and repositioned her prize. And to end off her day, a knock on the head. A knock on the head. Isn't that absolutely adorable? Poor little girl managed to bang herself against a tree, which I'm not going to lie, is probably something I would do also. What a shame. But she is showing us some serious skill in her hoisting abilities. Took a little bit of some time and some decisions and some reflexes. Paul managed it. Columba is well in growing up to be quite the fine lady. So I don't know if my luck is going to come in today, but I like to take gambles and I like to see if we can take the chance and potentially see any leopards. So we're going to continue forward on our very bumpy road right now. I want to send you across to Mr. Hendry and Mr. Hosanna. I'm just tickling Hosanna here. As you can see, it's very calming for him. Scratch him behind his ear. And the other ear. Mm. Yes, it's not, shouldn't it, boy? Yes. There we go. As you can see, I've relaxed him beautifully with my tickling. He has not moved at all, other than to sit up slightly. Now, he's probably going to disappear over the edge of this bank and make it impossible for us to follow him. He came here because he heard some impala rutting nearby. Oh, and Kirsten's just saying he wants a belly rub. If we could just um, allow us to belly rub him. There we go. Yes. Mm, very nice. Yes, what a good boy. There we go. <laughs> He's so satisfied with his belly rub. So he came down here because he heard some impala rutting and then decided that he was much too tired to possibly uh, go after them, so he lay down here. And I must confess to you that both Senzo and I dropped off with him for about five or ten minutes and both woke up thinking, oh my goodness, has he left? But he hadn't left. It was just the most perfect place to have a little snooze. Sun going down, surrounded by gorgeous trees, perfect temperature, still with just a bit of bird song around us, lovely winter smells, and of course our favorite cat sitting right next to us. I of course wouldn't have told you that if we had lost him. No, I don't think so, Perez. I don't think his return has got to do with the seasons. I think he's just an explorer who is not territorial. I think perhaps the confrontation he had with the Anderson Mail down south could have precipitated a move back home. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's a seasonal thing. It may become a seasonal thing, however, if the water in the pan is the only thing water around that's going to be the best place for him to be, and I think he'll stay there. And so, you know, as the season gets drier and that becomes the most concentrated water in the area, he may well hang around because of the season, if you know what I mean. But I don't think he came back here because of the season. He's just going to have a little snooze. I wish you could hear what's going on on the Game Drive radio right now. 
It is quite spectacular. It is this uh, appalling language called Fanagalo being spoken. That is a discussion for another time, as Hosanna snoozes. He certainly has inherited that from his father, a very superb ability to sleep. He's in a very nice ambush position here. It's not impossible that a diker could come wandering past and find itself in his teeth. He spotted something now. What have you got, Hosanna? What you got? Okay, we'll wait here with Hosanna and see if he does actually spot anything. In the meantime, Three Sleeps has managed to find herself some elephant. I have caught up with them and we had them really nice and close, but now they have passed us, but we're still going to be here and we can view them from here. I am just going to tuck in this small port part here off the road and we can see them off to our right there. <gasps> Hello you bums that I see walking off. Now it was quite a big herd and they seem to be two little babies in there too which is very very sweet. And they're all just having a nice meal and the one seemed to have it was that bull the last one that was just walking off he seemed to have some pinkness on him especially on his feet which was interesting. I'm sure Tristan had um, a bull that was also looking a bit pink, but it was also around the ears. Now, this guy doesn't have it around the ears. Oh, hello, you. Look at that tail thrashing from side to side. I think we should move on to that area. Oh, you're picking up something there. All right, let's move off just a little bit because it's a nice space just in front of us. And they're all there. It's not, it's... Now, okay, all right, I'm almost there. In the meantime, let me send you over to Tristan so he can chat more about Hasana. Well, good luck to Charlotte. Hopefully you find them. We are going to continue with potential threats that Hosanna faces. Obviously we discussed the Nkuma Pride and their sort of issues that they have and obviously lions have come this week in mass and of course their own set of circumstances which is unusual because we haven't had lions much over the course of the last sort of year and a half but they seem to be around and so he's going to have to factor that in but his main threats are really to do with male leopards and we discussed kind of Tingana's territory and where that all lies and how it's shrunk and how it's still kind of the core of where Hosanna is hanging out if you kind of compare the sort of overlapping areas so you have obviously Hosanna's sort of section which is mostly lying within Tingana's and I say mostly because we'll get into it a little bit later but the next real kind of main threat that we have to Hosanna is Hukumuri and I wanted to show you just how different Hukumuri's posture and his sort of behavior is towards Hosanna. So if you see here, Hukumuri, some of you will remember the sighting, um, Hukumuri just lying on a termite mound and Hosanna approaches thinking, well, it's meal time. I think there was a kill here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then Hukumuri sees him. You see how Hukumuri is ready. Look at the posture of Hukumuri in comparison to that last little bit that I showed you with Tingana. Now, of course, when I want to stop it, it won't stop. Um, but if you look, let's go back a little bit to where he's Oh no, that's not far enough. There we go. So there. Now you can see that posture already. His head is far more kind of forward. His body position, while still relaxed, is showing that he's very intent on watching who Hosanna is. Ears are forward, eyes focused over there. And if you watch it, and I'll play it now again, watch how his mouth is moving. So he's already showing displeasure at the fact that there is another leopard there. 
it's difficult to see, but you can see there's that mouth is going up and down, and that's generally grunts that take place. Now he looks one more time just to double check who this is, and then look straight away. He gets up and he starts moving towards Hosanna. Now Hosanna at that point would have realized very, very quickly that this is not a friendly animal and this is not a male that he knows and he would have changed his demeanor completely and that's why Hosanna broke and ran. And it was much like the interaction that he had now with Tingana and if we roll it forward from there you see Hosanna runs and that triggers Hukumuri to follow him and really kind of chase him and there's no sitting taking it very easy there's also impala's alarming right here as well so i don't know if lauren or somebody's close cursed if they can come check galago pan it sounds like some impalas are alarming but you see how he just chases him and luckily hosana got away but it's a very very different demeanor to what you see from a um the tingana encounter that i showed you of last year where the two of them were feeding close together you could see there hukumori didn't want nothing or didn't want anything to do with um hosana and and chased him straight away i'm just trying to listen to these impalas can you hear them Seb? Oh yeah. Sure. hold on Kirsty. i'm going to take you out my ear because i can't hear Mm, difficult there's some rutting impalas on quarantine too but i think galago pan might be worth checking there was definitely some shouting right so now hukumuri his territory is an interesting one when he first arrived here hukumuri was seen um around this sort of section this was kind of roughly where he was walking this was his first sort of arrival to this area mostly i mean he would move a bit more than this but this is roughly so let's call this 20 what was this, 20, end of 2017, beginning of 2018. So let's say 2018. Right. Since then, he, when H Tingana got sick, Hukumuri started to extend this direction. So he was going more this way and was eventually ending up kind of going here. I'm just going to put this line because that was the sort of eastern boundary of where Hukumuri went. So he kind of moved in those directions and he was really covering this whole section. Tingana then came back and it goes to show the power of what Tingana had. Even after being sick, he came back in and took this territory and has subsequently now pushed Hukumuri back in this direction. And so Hukumuri is heading this way these days and his territory now encompasses this. So he's pretty much going... That's now all Hukumuri, so we can put Hook there. So you can see Hukumuri has basically taken the Tingana territory of 2011 and has shifted the opposite way now and is being seen in all of this area here. He seemingly has managed to throw out Anderson. Um, Anderson still gets seen a little bit on EP at the moment and Arath who's a private but is not really coming into the areas that he has. So Hukumuri has really established himself over this section. It's why we're not seeing Shadulu at all. So Shadulu, essentially at the moment, you could probably draw, this would be Shadulu's territory around Arethusa with the cub at the moment. Shadulu plus cub. Um, and that's why she's staying there. If you look at Hukumuri's territory, you can see very, very clearly from that, she is basically in the center of it, with Tiani being around the Manuleti riverbed with her cub. So this is Tiani plus cub, and Moya down in this area over here. So this is Moya, she was the one that killed Shadubi's cub. But you can see how the females have positioned themselves dead center of the male territory, and he, in turn, has pushed out and moved as much as he possibly can in order to establish that territory by himself and to have that. What that's meant is that it's meant he hasn't really been focusing on Juma much at all. But what I think could happen is if, let's hypothetically say, Tingana starts to disappear, right? Tandi starts to come into Estrus, Klalamba starts to come into Estrus. That could very well mean that he starts to then try and expand back sort of this direction going kind of this way and try and take this Mulawati system for himself um, and try and expand it out so that he can then obviously have those two females as well as Sabui and Kupona which are hanging around down the little Gari Chitua vessels and its area so that's probably what Hukumuri's threat is to Hosanna. Hosanna Tip really can't move westwards because of Hukumuri and if he does he's going to get pushed either south, west or back east again um, and so it's why Hosanna has positioned himself in this very small territory here and the reason for that is because there is another male or two males that I want to talk about that are pressurizing him from a different size. 
So if Fosana gets territory, Melinda, no. Um, he's not going to chase off Tandy and Clalamba because they are females and he wants to mate with them. It's unfortunately a natural thing about uh, male leopards and male lions is that they want to mate with as many females as possible, whether they're related to them, they couldn't care less. In fact, um, there's been situations where fathers have mated with their daughters, um, and so it happens, you know. Um, and so Hosanna will in no way chase females out. Um, his interaction with Clalamba the other day suggests that, and, and Tandy many times before. So if he became territorial, much like Kukumori or Tingi, he'll try and kind of get those females and mate with them. Um, I know it's very complicated and messy at the moment, um, but we'll kind of try and maybe hopefully you can understand what's going on and we'll kind of clean it up and maybe try to do a digital version. I always say that, but I never get around to it. Anyway, we've got a few other things we want to discuss, but in the meantime, let's send you back across to James and the very cat we've been discussing. I can only imagine that the drawing going on there was in fact far better than any of the drawing I could have achieved, so any apologies that Tristan is making, I suspect, are probably unwarranted, although he did say to me the other day that his drawing skills are not very good. Kirsten just re reaffirming my suspicion that indeed Tristan's drawing is much better than mine. Thank you, Kirsten. Hosanna seemed to spot something up ahead, and then I suspect it moved off and he went to sleep. Now, I just wanted you to listen for 10 seconds. It's quite interesting. Not from a leopard point of view, but around us there are some white-browed scrub robins going prr, prr, and giving their, ter their last sort of evening call. Above us is a drongo going grrr, that's mimicking them, but not very effectively. Hmm? Oh, all right, we're going to go to infrared now, everybody. Sorry about that. The color is now finished. But what's interesting for me about the drongo is that they are often the very last birds to call before the evening starts, if you know what I mean? So before the night jars and other creatures, creatures of the night start moving, the drongos will come out, call their last. Beautiful, peaceful evening here on the banks of the great Umaloamati. Also, I think so too. I'm sorry about this angle, everyone, but if I go around the front of him, whatever he was looking at will most certainly scarper. Now, I know that many of you have been very worried about our young chief and whether or not he's getting sufficient to eat to grow into the fullness of his adulthood. Well, he was eventually successful. The belly was fuller next day when Hosanna sought a drink. Satisfied he was, a recently deceased and half-consumed impala lay close by. Finally, a good feed with no lion gangsters inviting themselves to dinner. The chubby chief chomped down, choosing the seclusion of a bush rather than a safe hoist. Satisfied, he cleaned off his murder mittens to finish the day. So as you can see there, he did have a good meal, but unfortunately that evening, the kill was stealing by two male lions but I think he got a pretty good feed out of it. Yesterday, again, though, he looked very hungry when he had a nasty boxing match with Tingana. I haven't seen any of the footage. Unfortunately, I think because it was so dark and there were so many bushes around, I don't actually think we got much of the action. I think I saw it, but poor Sebastian had absolutely no chance with the camera. So I'm not sure we'll be able to show you that, but we will do our best to cobble something together at some stage. Anyway, I think he ate something small last night, maybe a scrub hair or two. He could certainly do with another meal, but he looks better fed than he did yesterday evening. Alrighty, and that segs us nicely to Trishala, who in fact watched those Avoca males and would like to tell you more about them. 
Okay, so Trishala has been to the dens. In fact, they are all empty at the moment, except for the Shibamu one, which I haven't checked yet, but I'm making my way down there, especially because we found some lion tracks right here near the den on the little two track that takes us into the den. And they looked, they looked fairly fresh. Now, there you go, that's our den empty but that actually might make sense because if there were lions roaming around here sorry Davi I'll try not to lose him if there's lions roaming around here the, the hyenas are not going to be happy about it at all and they will pretty much oh no I thought I saw something but no just check in that bush there right here It was just right here. I think it was a dwarf mongoose, though. I just saw a flash of darkness. Now, you have to always investigate those things because before you know it, it could be a leopard, and if you didn't stop to check, you'd feel pretty bad about it, I think. So I'm going to try and show you one of these tracks now. I'm not sure. So they seem to be going... Let me just explain this to you. So, I'm just going to jump off. Now, these tracks, if I can find a good one, it's always, like I said, more difficult in the darkness. But, so the hyena den, it goes, you go straight in here, and the tracks seem to go in this direction, at least when I had light to see them. Okay, <laughs> here is... Nope, that's a hyena still, hyena still. Where did you go, Trax? Ah, here we go. Can you see that? I'm trying to create a shadow. It's always more difficult, but I'm just looking right here. And you can make it out, cool. So there's, there's a number of them that were moving in this direction, um, but I'm just glad that they seem to move past that way instead of coming into the hyena den, which is awesome, but they look fairly fresh. Yep, they look fairly fresh. So we could manage to catch them at Treehouse Dam, which is right around the corner, which would be awesome. So let us rush over that way and see if we can catch up with some lions. Now, one of our good conservation practices is not to make through roads out of roads that never existed. So that's why we're not going to go out that way, even though it's quicker, we're going to go out the top. But while I make my way out of here, let me remind you what happened with the evokers last week and all the fun that went down. The two evokers, Blondie and Mohawked Male, spoilt us with their presence last week. The third brother seems to stay further north than these two who regularly visit Juma. But no doubt their bromance is still strong. Apart from bromance, romance between these brothers and the Inkahumas has added a certain buzz in the air. The potential for lion cubs once again on Juma. It was truly a pleasure to spend that amount of time with them. And they're hanging about so much these days, these last couple days at least, that hopeful, hopeful Trishala. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Oh my goodness, can I still talk? Yes, I can. Um, hopeful Trishala still hopes that there will, there will be cubs around, of course. Wow, my voice is slowly fading. <laughs> While I try to get my voice back, let me send you over to someone who has a better voice, Tristan. It's the worst thing ever when your voice starts to disappear and you can't get it back or if you've got something stuck in your throat, it's a horrible feeling and you're trying to gag and get the words out. Very, very tricky, but as I said, we're showing you that buffalo has nothing to worry about because it doesn't have to... Um, speak at all really and is not taking any breaths at this stage now terry was asking about hukumuri and he, since he's been going into londolozi whether or not that means potentially he could have chased hosana out 
Um, Terry, possible. Uh, the thing is, is there's, I mean, there's obviously things that happen in the night and in the days that we just don't know. Now, I'm apologizing if you hear somebody hitting a punching bag because somebody's decided that this is the time of the day to do gym. Anyway, um, so essentially it's possible that Hukumori could have chased Fasana. The thing is, is there, there is zero um, evidence to suggest that. There's nobody that's reported tracks of that nature or any sighting of that nature, which is um, obviously quite tricky. Um, so, possible. I, I don't know. I also know some of you are asking about where Hosanna and Tukumuri um, had their little incident, which was basically on the western side of Juma, on this little spot right here. H versus H. It sounds like a WWE wrestling match um, mm. that happened, but yes, that was somewhere in that general section, western side of Juma, um, which was in the core of his territory. It's not quite as far south as that. I think it was somewhere here. I, I wasn't here for that sighting, but I roughly remember it being in the western side of Juma somewhere. But there was various other incidents. They, they had a little kind of meeting up somewhere in the drainage of Ingwe Alley as well one day. So it's that too. Right, now, obviously we've spoken about Hukumuri, we've spoken about Tingana, um, and we've spoken about the, the threats that those pose. But the one threat that I think is probably the biggest, bar obviously lions, hyenas, um, which nobody has really looked at much of and doesn't speak about much of is the male that was seen this morning and it's quite apt that he was seen this morning because I wanted to talk about him probably quite a lot and why I left him for last um, is because he was seen this morning and he is here way 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 more than we even understand or realize what is incredibly evident from just quickly going through some of the camera trap footage from um, Panthera is that this male is cruising the whole of Juma and he's around more than you can even imagine and it is a skittish male that we have and he is called skittish male which drives me up the wall no end and so this week i have made it my mission to make sure that he is no longer called the skittish male and so i have now contacted every single range and asked for their um if they would like to participate in giving him a name obviously we don't do it here at wild earth so we give it to the rangers around and none of them really seem to be too keen because well they haven't spent much time with him so i've now given it to the juma guides and so we're going to get some names from them and decide on a name and so hopefully by this time next week he will no longer be called the skittish male so that's a good thing um, but essentially I've got a little bit of footage of him. There's actually two males in this. One male not really so relevant anymore, but it's part of the unknown males that have been around over the last little bit. So this is our skittish boy that we saw this morning. This is a fairly decent view. I'm going to pause it so that you can see there. To me, this particular male, I, it's not really, I just wanted him to turn a little bit. Um, to me, he's a, an individual, so we can just pause it right there, Kirst, thank you. Um, is that he looks very much like he has Mvula blood in him. I don't know why it is. He reminds me of Quarantine Konuma, Mvula. I don't know if it's that kind of squared off nose that he's got. But for those of you that want to be able to identify him, two one spot pattern, two on the right side of his face, one spot on the left side of his face. Quite a bulky, big individual. This was a sighting, I think, with Taylor, if I remember correctly. Um, at the end of last year and he has been seen a handful of times by some of the other guides and then obviously this morning with Steve I also think he was the leopard that was on the drone that very first time when we did the thermal drone that was evading the vehicle I'm pretty sure that it was him given the nature and, and where it was and where that drone image was of him avoiding the car and where Steve found him today is pretty much the exact same space so that gives you an idea but what I wanted to show you is roughly his territory now I, I, I used all three colors for this so I'm going to have to do lots of work here this is going to be interesting Seb let's arm ourselves with all three colors because I didn't have enough colors and there wasn't enough permanent markers let's see if I can do this so that it makes the lines that I needed to make all the way around right now his most of his sightings i'm just going to do some crosses with the green x so you can understand have been this kind of area shibamu um he was seen on weaver's nest road and then on chelapan which is pretty much in the center of tingana hosan in fact chelapan is a little bit more sort of there so that's where his kind of sightings have been been a lot in the mulwati on the boundary here um on little gauri on vessels on chitwa on a nets He's been seen there, and then also he's been seen in Hoffmans and Mala Mala. So there's been various sightings. But what we can work out now from some of the pictures that we found is that this individual male at the moment, and like I say, I'm going to try to do this all in one. Here we go, Seb. We're going to do... This is not working very well, Seb. Hold on. 
trying to get them all in a row. It works when there's like a curve, but he seems to be moving kind of in this section. Oh no, it's not working. Hold on. We're just going to do it roughly like this. Um, all the way up to Biffle's Hook Dam, if you can believe that. And around. So essentially this is his territory, there's little stripy lines. I know it's not easy, I'll fill in a bit of red so that you can kind of pick it up um, in between all of this. Um, there we go. So there we go. So it's essentially that section that he is there, which is a lot bigger than any of us even realized. Um, and he's here a lot more than we all realize. Now the reason why I say that he is going to be a potential threat is if we have a look at this leopard on the screen, this individual is not an old male. He is not an ancient individual that is passing through like an Mfakazi. Um, this is a male that is in his prime and a male that very, tip, very, very easily could be challenging Tingana and why Tingana is moving northward. So I was saying earlier he's moving north and I'm pretty sure this is the boy that is causing that movement from Tingana and I'm pretty sure some of the sores we're hearing is even him as he goes around. Now I'm going to play it on because there's another male that's going to appear shortly so that's him kind of just lounging around. He was actually fairly alright here and then moved and apparently this morning he was okay. This was another male that we saw. His name was Quatile. came from the northern Manuleti. We only saw him I think once or twice um, but this is just another male that passes through and it was just to highlight the fact that he wasn't actually that skittish. He wasn't too bad really now that I think of it but um, it's just to highlight the fact that there's transient males that are going to be probably the biggest threat to Hosanna here as Tingana ages Hukumuri's got such a big area that these guys are going to be the ones that are coming in much like he moves to Londolozi so the opposite effect is happening all around this territory and so this skittish individual is around and is going to be causing a few problems and then obviously any transient males like Quatile that we have here. Now a lot of you might be wondering well what about quarantine and what is happening with quarantine. So quarantine is still his same of all the leopards has not changed at all. His is still the exact same in Koro, Cheetah Plains, Torchwood, a little bit into Biffle's Hook territory. That is still quarantine so we can put Q there and then Gajima is still the same this kind of area up here. So this is Gajima up here. So it's still the same pretty much with Kojima. He does push a little bit further than that. The only other one that will be new to this map that many of you won't know um, is this fella that is coming out of the Manuleti in this area uh, which is Nklangula who is being starting to see you know, on the northern boundary. That might push a little bit south but I don't think so. Um, so he's another one. Other than that there's one other male which I need to show you um, that has been seen a few times in the west that could particularly be a problem. I unfortunately couldn't find um, any sort of footage of him obviously because we haven't seen him but he's an individual that has been seen so I'm just going to use my phone for this one. I do apologize that it's scratched or broken. I dropped it on a rock the other day. Um, so there we go. That is um, the other male that's been seen on Simambili and that area has got quite a sort of look to him, apparently also quite shy, quite skittish, but he could potentially be a threat. Simambili Elephant Plains apparently is where he's been hanging around um, and not too far actually from our western boundary sometimes too. So those are all the kind of male leopards that we have around this area. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea. Now a lot of you are wondering about Tumba and I'm pretty sure with the Tumba warriors they are, and I don't mean warrior, I mean like as those that are concerned about him, um, was also some Konyuma um, people that would like to know where he is. Um, Tumba, unfortunately off this map um, a little bit, although he was seen with um, Osana a while back just around this kind of area. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring up the map that I had earlier because it's going to be much easier to explain it. Um, sorry, Seb. Let me just go full screen here quickly. Um, we don't need Hosana in this one. Yeah. Alright, so here we go. Here is the line that comes down which separates the northern block. This is Londolozi all over here and then this is Singita on this side. So that line there is where Singita is. Tamba has gone this way. He was seen with Hosanna around this area a few, about a month and a half ago um, down the side. Uh, but he spends most of his time on Singita and then going further west 
um, towards Ulusaba and those areas. He was seen, I spoke to somebody from Singita about a week ago, well, not even, five days ago, and they had just seen him that day. So he's spending a lot of time on Singita and, and the western side, apparently very healthy, very well. Konyuma, on the other hand, is on this section here. So this is Mala Mala on this side, um, and Konyuma's all along this area over here. That's Gittish Mail, the northern piece, and then Konyuma coming down. Um, so that's where he is, and that gives you kind of an idea of what's going on. And on my map, essentially, this would be Konyuma, where I've written Mala Mala, and Tamba would be off the map altogether. So hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit of what's going on with Hosanna and the pressures that he's going to face and his return and what that means for him returning in the current environment. Um, it's obviously been a little bit tricky for him and he's going to have a tough time over the next few months as all of these males look to head in this area. In the meantime though, let's talk, we'll send you across basically to Hosanna himself and see how much it's worrying him. I suspect not at all. We're just listening to some Impala alarm calling. They're not near him. If something else hasn't popped out close by, Tandi maybe. A skittish male, perhaps, all of that pressure that could be exerted on young Hosanna could even be Tingana. You could just hear the impala. There's no way that impala can see this leopard. of a female in this area earlier. <laughs> Casey, I don't think so, no. I don't think any of the animals recognize their names. I suppose if you raised a leopard from birth as a little cub and you constantly reaffirmed it, its name like you might with a dog, it might be able to learn its name. I don't see why it wouldn't be able to. Cats don't seem to be very good at it, house cats. I know that those who own cats may well disagree with me, but you know, my mother's owned a cat since the day I was born, and I've never managed to gather that the cat has any idea of what its name is. I think they definitely recognize voices, of course, but whether it recognizes its name or not, I'm not sure. person just telling me that's because cats are basically choosing to ignore you. Well, that might be the case. But I definitely don't think Hosanna knows that his name is Hosanna. His flat little nose. <laughs> like his mum's. What can you see, boy? I think there's a female leopard around here could easily be on the road behind us. I think it's probably worth staying with him rather than going to try and find the other leopard. Ah, yes, you can see he's absolutely fascinated by the goings-on around him. seen something. Monique, I think I have heard a leopard's stomach growl, yes, absolutely. Looking with my spotlight but not spotting anything. The best way to find another leopard will be to stay with this leopard. Can you hear something? Behind us? A hyena. Senzo, with his superb senses, has managed to pick up a hyena. Ah, yes. Just behind us, a hyena. He heard it going, oh, says Senzo. Beautiful picture of our little chief there. He's watching the hyena. Which will definitely be able to see him, I think. Now, 
why yesterday evening we had Tangana being disturbed by a hyena in advert break and I caused enormous offence to somebody by suggesting that the hyena should go elsewhere. It was June and I suggested that the hyena go elsewhere quite stringently because of course we really wanted Tangana for the TV show. Well, somebody took profoundly deep offence on Twitter and to that person I must apologise. I um, certainly meant no harm by it. It was a, a weak attempt at comedy. <laughs> Oops. Righteous indignation flowed through the airwaves. Now, I think that Tri Shalas has been at the hyena den looking for hyenas. I don't think she managed to find any there, but she would like to talk about them. That is right, and now I'm coming from the, the southernmost end, the Shibama Road Den, and still nothing there. But my concern more was for the lion tracks that were along that road and how many there were. But it appears that they went past the dens and actually might have come out and gone right, which is best for us, or gone west, because that is away from the dens. And that would make me a little bit happier considering what happened to Koki. And then I thought maybe they'd be at the dam, but not, not yet, at least. Or possibly, although there were no, they, I thought possibly they could have been drinking there, but there were no tracks around there at all. So now I'm going to go back to that herd that I saw earlier and hopefully catch up with them. Now, I really wish that those hyena dens were active because I have had such wonderful times with them, and especially with Ribbon and Cub last week. Our Juma clan of hyenas never fail to entertain us here at Safari Live. At one of the many dens, Ribbon's afternoon turned from a lazy one to one full of action when she decided to call out her remaining little cub. She almost seemed to regret it as soon as she did it. A treat at the local Treehouse Dam Spa no doubt crossed her mind as the cub emerged and dashed all hopes of a day of pamper. Having a sibling to play with is a gift, both for her cub and Ribbon's own sanity. But with Mum as the only playmate, a round of hyena jumping castle had to ensue. This little one showed buckets of personality and energy. The cub seemed to settle down in the lotus position for a bit of quiet meditation. But alas, scratching and jumping soon followed. Mum was not jumping for joy about this as her expression seemed pensive, perhaps lost in the memories and pondering the mystery of her missing cub. So splendid to spend some time with them. And you notice at the end that I said perhaps she would be pondering the missing cub. It's something I think about often because you, are, you do have a lot of studies that indicate that certain situations can express different hormones. So perhaps they can experience things the way we do. Or perhaps they show the similar types of patterns, but whether they ex experience it like we do is still questionable. Now we have caught up with these elephants which is amazing because I was expecting them a little further on but they did me a very good service and came further this way. I'm sorry my my cap and head is in your way but I'll try not to. We don't want to get any less of you of these wonderful elephants. Uh, when you're driving around in the darkness and you just sort of hear that and then the of the trees and branches all falling around you and being kind of interfered with by all the elephants as they move through, as they eat. And then you won't even realize that there are about 20 around you. All you can do is hear them and then suddenly they're there on the road. Here you can hear how noisy they are. Now, did you see what she did there? Picked up one leg 
just like that. While the other ones are down. Now what that does is it creates a triangle. So if any vibrations that are coming from distance away from other elephant herds, by triangulating it, you, can, you are able to actually get a direction. So that's one of the theories as to why they're doing that. Anyway, this is my roadblock for the evening. Let me send you over to James and Hosanna so they can say goodbye from us all. liked me pretending to snore. <laughs> I'm sorry everybody, I've run out of superlatives for young Hosanna here. I think what you can see there is definite evidence of a belly that is quite full. Buggy, the most important question ever asked about leopards you have now achieved. Why, you ask, do leopard testicles not have rosettes? Now, there's an enormous body of research dedicated precisely to this um, particular phenomenon of why do the leopard testicles not have any rosettes on them. And in fact, there's an enormous sort of uh, conference they have every year in Atlanta, Georgia, where they discuss this phenomenon of how come do the uh, leopard testicles not have rosettes on them. And unfortunately, up until this point, nobody has come up with a conclusive reason for this strange phenomenon, other than perhaps it is the sort of um, hue of gold that the orbs are, perhaps attracts females and so the golder they are the more attractive they are it is a little bit like a peacock's tail instead of a peacock's tail the leopard male has got extremely golden orbs and the golder they are the more likely he is to mate so i think that buggy is why the leopard does not have rosé Okay, everybody, that's it. Goodbye and thank you very much. We will we'll see you tomorrow.